Hi, today we're going to talk about how to laser engrave custom dice. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. In this episode, I'm going to talk about how to laser engrave custom dice. Now, I don't know if you know, but you can buy blank dice on the internet. And uh, the, all the dice in front of me here are 16 millimeter six-sided dice. But you can get uh, other variations of dice as well. And the techniques I'm going to talk about will work for them with just a little bit of a modification. You can't cut these on a laser cutter, at least not my laser cutter, because mine can only cut up to a half inch thick material, and these are 16 millimeter. But it can engrave them beautifully. So what I'm going to talk about is how you cut a jig that then allows you to position and hold the dice perfectly for engraving, accurate engraving. And I'm also going to talk about how to apply paper and engrave through it so that you can paint them afterwards and get perfect results. So we'll talk about all of that in this episode. These are the dice I got on the internet. For this example, I'm going to use these transparent blue ones and some solid white and ivory. I use full page fluorescent labels to mask the dice and I measure the strips by laying the dice out, putting on a piece of masking tape. And then I just uh, slide the label in and cut it and then take the strips and cut them and make them into small squares. For the second half of my project, I'm engraving nine dice at a time, a three by three matrix. So I lay out three dice, move the masking tape, and I cut larger squares to cover those. And here are the game dice that are covered on all six sides. And the squares I'm going to use to do the 3x3 three three matrix, and you'll see how I use that in the video. To get measurements for my Adobe Illustrator design, though, I always use my calipers to get accurate measurements. I use the dice from Dark Souls, the board game, as the inspiration for these game dice. And here you see the jig, the cutting lines for the jig. And I've laid out the engraving of the six sides in exactly the way they are on the reference dice. And I have a plan for how I'm going to rotate the dice through this. So I uh, move them across the four, and then I rotate them up into this side and down into the last side. And then, of course, it goes in a circle. So I'm going to be rotating the dice through this pattern. The idea I'm experimenting with on the nine dice is to create a puzzle with six different images. And they're going to be laid out together, and I'm going to cut them apart with this tic-tac-toe engraving design. And then here are the six designs. They're six different leaves. So the game dice has everything it needs in one print. I just run it seven times, one to cut the jig and six to engrave the different sides of the dice. When I send my project out of Illustrator, I have an option in the print preferences to set my defaults. I use this to establish the most common settings. So I say it's cast acrylic. I set the thickness to a quarter inch because that's what my jigs are cut out of. And I set the raster speed to 50-50, which is actually a deep engraving, much deeper than the standard default settings. But each time I run the laser cutter, I can go into the manual overrides and select either the black for the engraving or the red for the cutting. I pick mode and I get a drop down and I can tell it to skip the part that I don't want it to do on that run. So when I'm cutting the jig, I tell it to skip the black and just cut the red and that's what's going on here. I don't move the acrylic. I use a wad of uh, masking tape to pull those pieces out and then I go ahead and load up the dice the first time. Now I have to get the engraving settings right and I tell it to skip the red but most important I raise the height of the laser to 0.64 inches so it clears the dice. And I always check the speed and power to make sure that it's still set at deep engrave or 50% for each. So here it is engraving and when it's done I do my rotation and I have to be very methodical about this to make sure that everything's on the correct side. I rotate things through and then I just run it again and I do this six times in a row and this is what I get. The puzzle dice, however, I'm going to have to print out of Adobe Illustrator seven different times. So there I have to use the X and Y settings for placement. So you click on the placement button and you get the X and Y and I'm positioning these at one and a half inch on the X and the Y, and that's the center of this square right here. 
So every time I send a print over, all I'm going to need to do is to once again enter those coordinates for the X and the Y. I put in my dice, I put on a single piece of label, stick it on, and here it is rastering. And that deep raster is actually going to cut the dice apart so that I can rotate them in the next step. You can see it here, it's all cut apart and the dust from the laser engraving. I think this method would work to do a lot of identical dice at once. It's faster than putting stickers on individually. So here's the puzzle dice with all six sides engraved. At this point, Steve suggested uh, doing something that showed the six designs that people were expected to make. So we whipped up this little board here that has the pictures of the six leaves and a space to uh, do the puzzle. The first step, of course, in painting is to use a brush to sweep out the dust from all the engraving. And then here I'm painting the white. I did two coats of the white because it was on a dark uh, uh, background and I, I needed that for good coverage. Peel it off before it gets completely dry and use Goo Gone and a Q-tip to clean off the residual sticky stuff. I'm using Citadel base paints and I got good enough coverage out of the black that it only took one coat. I had some smoke on the white part of the dice when I took the paper off and I didn't have any alcohol around so I poured vodka in a cup, used the q-tips and it was frighteningly good at taking off the smoke and the sticky stuff. Here's the puzzle dice. I'm pretty happy with these, kind of have an artistic look to them. And uh, the game dice turned out great. I was really pleased with those. You can use these ideas to make custom dice or dice for a game you're designing. Uh, you can use these ideas for anything that you buy that can be engraved on a laser cutter. I have many more projects. I especially like to make things for gaming, so if you're interested, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.